Hi there, welcome to live stream Yoga with Louise, tips and cues to keep you safe and strong on the mat. Today's yoga class is all about sukha, softness, and comes from the yogic saying, Sathira Sukha, looking for strength within softness. This piece of yogic wisdom advises us not to tense up the body when we're moving into poses. And this usually happens when we find a pose particularly challenging. Instead, we are encouraged to soften and relax into the movement. And from this position of softness, look for the strength within the pose. This also ensures that the energy meridians in the body are kept open, free flowing, without obstruction, so that we not only feel energized during the class, but also after the class. As always, I'd like you to play where you're comfortable, modify where you need to, and feel comfortable to take a time out in child pose should you need it. You ready to play? Let's hit the mat. We're going to set up for today's class coming into easy sit sukhasana. So I'd like you to come to a comfortable cross-legged seated position on the mat, maybe leading with the right leg in front, sitting up nice and tall and place your hands, palms down on the knees. We're going to start with a little bit of breath work. Surya Beda, build up a little bit of heat energy in the body. And I'd like you to take your middle and index finger. You can either place it on the third eye, that area between the two eyebrows, or you can tuck the two fingers in. With your thumb, you're going to control the opening and the closing of the right nostril. And with your ring finger, you're going to control the opening and the closing of the left nostril. We're going to be inhaling and exhaling through the nose exclusively. For this exercise, you'll be inhaling exclusively through the right nostril and exhaling only through the left nostril. When you're ready to begin, close the left nostril, inhale through the right, let's say for four counts, then close the right nostril and exhale out of the left. Repeat the exercise, closing the left, inhaling through the right, and then exhaling through the left. Your inhalation to exhalation ratio should be at a one to two. So if you're inhaling for, let's say, three counts, you're going to double up and exhale for four. If you're inhaling for four, you're going to double up and exhale for eight. Sorry, so that was three to six or four to eight. And you can build that up so that progressively you start increasing the breath capacity. You could even close your eyes and take your focus in. Start relaxing and softening the body as you breathe. Find a breath pattern that works for you. Inhaling only through the right, connecting to our sympathetic nervous system and building up that heat energy in the body, exhaling only through the left. Let's do one more round. As you complete your last round, gently open the eyes and find your way to a full point kneeling position on the mat. Knees stacking underneath your hips, hands stacking comfortably underneath your shoulders with a nice straight tabletop line on the mat. Keep your feet soft and relaxed in parallel as we find a gentle flow. Take a big breath in to prepare and then gently kick back into child pose, allowing your bum to float back towards your heels with the arms extended on the mat in front of you. Come back to your tabletop position, pausing, finding that length and that strength through the spine, and then gently coming through the tabletop line and giving me a modified up dog, stretching through the lower belly area and pushing the floor away with your hands. Come back to your tabletop line, find that length through the spine, keep pulling the belly button in, Exhale to sit back in child, stretching those arms out in front. Inhale, come back to the center line. 
Exhale, move with care, strong. So zippering up on those inner thighs, pulling up through the lower belly area as you find your modified up dog. Make sure you're not collapsing through the shoulders. So push the floor away with your hands. Find your way back to table. Exhale, sit back in child. Inhale, come back to table. Exhale as you flow through into your modified kneeling up dog, zippering up on those inner thighs and pulling up strongly from the pelvic floor towards the belly button. Find your way back to table. Let's do two more rounds. Exhale to sit back in child, finding that length and relaxing and softening as you push the mat away. Find your way back into table on an inhale, belly button firmly pulled in. Exhale to find your modified up dog. As you float back to your four point kneeling position this time, find that comfortable midway point and then start tracing a big clockwise circle. So you're pushing into the outside of the hands, transferring the weight to the other side and tracing a big circular pattern, keeping the belly button firmly pulled into center as you trace that circle. Allow your breath and your movement to sink. So give me a nice big inhale for half of your circle circumference and then exhale for the other half, keeping your belly button softly pulled in. Being mindful not to tense, but to relax the body as you move. Find your way back to your tabletop line and coming back into a small flow. From your table, exhale to round out your spine, finding a nice little stretch in cat, feeling that stretch into the shoulder blades and the lower back. Inhale to come back to your long length and tabletop line and exhaling to sit back in child. Inhale to come back to your tabletop position and this time keep the elbows tucked in as you bend down through the elbows, almost trying to tap your chin to the floor and then dragging the weight forward and setting up a gentle cobra line. From your cobra line, think of that up dog we played with, push into the palms, come into an almost kneeling frame, strong through the lower abdominals and the arms and then ease your way back to table. Exhale to round up. Inhale to find your table. Exhale to sit back in child. Inhale to come back into your tabletop line. Exhale to bend the elbows and caterpillar down into the belly, setting up a gentle cobra with the arms alongside your body, elbows tucked in, bottom ribs still connected into the mat, and then push up through the palms and the knees and find a modified up dog. Find your way back into table. Exhale to round out and cap. Inhale to come back to table. Exhale to sit back in child. Inhale to come back to table. Exhale to bend the elbows, caterpillar down, set up your cobra line, lengthen from the mid back towards the nape of the neck and drop the shoulders away from your ears. Stay or play, push up through the palms and the knees and find your modified up dog. Ease back to your table, belly button firmly into center as you play. Big breath in to prepare, exhale to round out and cat. Inhale to come back to table. Exhale to sit back in child. Inhale to come back to table. Long and lengthen through the spine. Exhale to bend the elbows and find your way onto the belly. Set up a gentle cobra line. Bottom ribs still connected, dropping those shoulders away from the ears. Legs long and relaxed. Glutes nice and relaxed. Push up through the palms onto the knees and find your kneeling up dog. Belly nice and strong, shoulders nice and strong. Let's do one more round. Find your way into table. Inhale to prepare. Exhale to round up. Feel that gorgeous stretch into the shoulders and the lower back. Inhale, find that length through the spine as you come back into table. Exhale to sit back 
in child. Keep looking for that length and that softening through the body. Find your way back into table. Caterpillar down, bending the elbows, but keep hugging them in towards the rib cage as you find your way into the belly. Almost push the mat softly away. Keep that bottom rib connected as you modify your cobra. And then push up onto the palms and the knees and come to your kneeling up dog. Nice and strong through the arms and the lower belly. Find your way back to your four-point kneeling position, quadrupe. And from here, we're going to start tracing an anti-clockwise circle. You can close the eyes if you like. Take your focus in. Inhale for half of your circle. Exhale for the other. Start looking for that quiet strength in the body as you warm up gently. Thinking of opening up those energy meridians in the body and keeping them free flowing. Let's do one more trace. Then we'll come back to our tabletop line on the mat. Tuck your toes under and hover your knees just off the floor. On an exhale, hit a down dog frame, trying to drop the heels as close to the floor as you can. On an inhale, come back to your hovering knee position. You're going to do that a couple of times, finding a steady rhythm of your own. Every time you hit the down dog frame, give me a nice exhale and incrementally try to drop the heels closer to the floor so that you're getting as close to, if not whole foot, on the floor as the back chain of the leg starts warming up. Keep your belly button softly pulled into center the whole time that you play. And remember not to tense the muscles, but rather to relax and release into the movement. Let's do two more. Then we'll gently find our way to the front of the mat. End in a down dog frame and just hold the down dog for me. Try not to push into the wrist line here. Rather think of drawing up energy through the fingertips in a little hastasana, almost hollowing out underneath the palms, drawing the energy up through the forearms into the shoulders and the upper back, and then dropping the heels of your feet down towards the floor, not tensing through the foot line. So even though the whole foot is connected, the toes and the feet are softly grounded to the mat. From here, we're gently going to walk to the front of the mat, and you can soften through the knees as much as you need to, to walk forward towards the front of your mat. Just give me a gentle forward fold, either connecting your fingertips or palms to the mat, or maybe coming to a soft tabletop line, dangling the arms down, or maybe finding a gentle brace on the top of your thighs if the floor is not accessible. Gently start playing with that weight placement in the feet, rocking the body weight back and forth, looking for that firm grounding through the feet. So think of drawing energy up through the feet and then allowing that energy to extend through the legs as you gently ragdoll roll up, restacking and realigning your body. Thinking knees over ankles, hips over knees, shoulders over hips and center aligning the head. From here, I want you to heel toe your feet in slightly so that you're just inside of hip width distance apart. We're going to come to a modified hastasana. I'd like you to start for me with the fingertips long and lengthened into the mat. Find that soft root through the feet and pretend that you're tugging on a little piece of string through the belly button that bends the right knee and brings it up into a soft tabletop line. So I want you to think inner thigh, top of your thigh and your lower abdominals all tied with that imaginary string. Hold it there for roughly 10 seconds, looking for that strong root through your supportive side and the fingertips strong and weighted towards the floor. Bring it down, give me a little shake out and rinse and repeat to the other side. Thinking knee to nose, stopping when you're at about waist height and looking for that connection through the inner thighs and the lower abdominals. Bring it back down and give it a shake out. Come back to the first side. And this time, as you bring the knee up, push your right palm into the right knee and float the left arm up to the ceiling, almost coming into a standing dead bug and feel even more of a connection through the lower abdominals 
and the inner thigh and the top of your thigh. So really engaging your whole powerhouse. Bring it down, give me a little shake out. Let's try that on the other side. So you're thinking left knee to hip, push the palm of the left hand into the left knee and just float the right arm softly overhead, palm looking in to the center line. Look for an even stronger connection with the inner thighs and the lower abdominals. Remember this connection. You're going to use it from memory for the next round. Give me a little shake out. Think knee to nose on the right. Pretend that you're pushing and resisting with your right hand. And then float both hands maybe softly just overhead. Stay or play. To play, take the right foot, cross it over the left leg as if you were sitting on the couch, keeping it loose and maybe dropping the toes to the mat as you sit softly back into half a chair. If you can, tuck the toes behind the left calf, sitting down into your chair, bringing your hands down in prayer and giving me a modified eagle chair with your hands softly in prayer, elbows tracking out to the side of the room. Look to soften and relax into your eagle modification. Don't tense the body. Keep your eye trained on a drishti or a focal point on the wall in front of you. And then gently peel up along the center line. Give me a little shake out if you need it. Let's try that on the other side. Thinking knee to nose. Floating your hands gently overhead. Think of the energy running through your body. Cross the left leg over the right. Find your seat, maybe tucking behind the calf or keeping the toes connected to the floor if you prefer. Bring your hands down in prayer. Allow the elbows to softly track out and just find the seat that's working for you. And it may not be the same side to side. Um, you may feel softer and more released on one side. Gently peel up along the center line. Take a big breath in and on the exhale, fold forward, almost swan diving down to find your forward fold, Uttanasana, either connecting your hands to the mat or coming <clears throat> into a modified halfway lift or finding a soft brace on the top of your thighs. You could even place a block on the floor in front of you and just give me a lean in position. Soften and relax into the forward fold. Don't tense the body. Maybe play with that weight placement, coming to stillness softly between the balls and the heels of your feet. Draw energy up through the legs as you gently peel back up into a standing position on the mat. Float both hands overhead. Feel that soft root through the feet extending all the way to the ceiling. And gently <clears throat> float your right leg up. This time, leg extended, not bent. Try and kick into the heel of your foot and bring it up as high as you can, preferably to about a waist high position. And keep grounding through your supportive side. Think of the energy drawing up through the inner thigh on your supportive side and then zippering up from the belly button towards your chest line. Bring it back down, arms at your sides. Give me a little shake out. Try that on the other side. Big breath in, find that soft root through the feet, float the hands overhead. Think of that energy coursing through the feet as you brace into the left foot and imagine tugging on that little piece of string through the belly button that ties the inner thighs, the top of your thighs and your lower abdominals, kicking them all into action. Bring it back to your start position, floating the arms down and softly giving me a little walk out, releasing that tension. Come into a modified warrior three from here. We'll lay the exercises before we put them together. Standing with your feet, um, maybe just inside of hip width distance apart, or sandwich together if you prefer. Find that focal point on the wall in front of you. Run your eye down that point as you hinge forward, bracing into the right foot and kicking into the foot behind you as if you were kicking the wall behind you, trying to come into a long length and tabletop line with the arms lengthened at your side, but don't tense through the shoulders. Lengthen through the fingertips, almost as if you were reaching back for that foot with the fingertips. Look for length and softness in the body. Float back to your start position on the mat. Give me a little shake out before rinsing and repeating on the other side. Big breath in. Float the leg up behind you, bracing and kicking, trying to keep your shoulders and your hips nice and square to the floor, belly button softly pulled in. You're looking for a strong but 
relaxed movement on the mat. Flow back to your start position. Shake it out. Now let's start playing with a little bit of a flow and make sure that you've got enough room to step back on your mat. So if you are on the tall side, maybe take a step or two to the front of your mat. All right, let's begin on the right. <clears throat> Coming into your warrior three. So remember, find that focal point, run your eye down the point, bring your eye back to the point to help with your balance. Take a big breath in and float that leg up behind you into the warrior three position, holding for maybe four or five seconds. Come back to your standing frame, but keep the right foot hovering off the floor and kick it up in front of you, floating both hands overhead. Pausing for maybe four or five seconds, then finding your way into that little eagle chair. So bending the right leg over the left, tucking behind the thigh, coming down softly in prayer around the center line. Looking for that control, that strength within the softness. And then gently unbuckle and kick up one more time. Try that flow one more time, trying to keep that right leg floating so that you're challenging your balance and your coordination. Kick the leg out in front of you, <clears throat> coming into a standing hastasana as you float the hands overhead. Pausing for a few beats here. And then finding your little eagle bind through the legs and coming down softly but actively with the hands in prayer as you sit back into your chair. From this position, take a big step back into a lunge line, framing the lead leg on either side with your hands. Creep the front foot forward if you need to and make sure that your knee and your ankle are aligned as you come into the lunge line. Drop the right hand underneath your right shoulder and give me a soft throw back on the left, thinking soft T-frame and dropping back the hand as far as you can, dropping the pelvis down to the floor. Look for the strength through the legs, but soften and relax into the lunge. Belly button firmly pulled in to center. Then float softly back towards the midline and almost step up the back leg slightly, coming into a pyramid shape. But try to keep it not too narrow. So I've got about a midway point. Try not to keep your step too narrow. Make it a, on the wide side, challenging yourself and trying to drop that back heel to the floor. Either staying here with your fingertips connected to the mat or maybe hands braced on your waist in a long tabletop line if the floor is not accessible. If you've got the range of motion, cross the right hand over the foot, cross the left hand over so that you're bracing on either side of the lead leg with your fingertips. You could even softly find a brace or a grip position on the top of your shin, wrapping around the calf if you prefer, or even higher up along the leg chain if you prefer. Play where you're comfortable. Keep pulling the belly button softly into center. And then from here, you're going to ease back into a lunge line again, uncross the hands, step back, drop your back knee, relax your back foot, wiggle the front foot forward if you need to, to line up your joints and gently flow both hands overhead, giving me a soft crescent lunge, rooting through the feet, legs are strong and grounded, but you're softening and relaxing through the shoulders and the arms and always trying to tap your fingers to the sky. Gently reconnect to the mat, tuck your back toe under and step back into a plank line for a little mini vinyasa. We're going to chaturanga down from your strong plank using knees or no knees. You're going to bend the elbows, hug them in towards your ribs, hover off the floor for a second and then relax to the mat and find a gentle cobra Relaxing the bridges of your feet, pushing the mat softly away. So almost dropping the elbows down towards the floor, but keeping them hovering. And then think of tucking the toes under and pushing up negatively to find your way back into plank. Pausing in the plank nice and strong through your core before you ease your way into a down dog. And then pause, taking a nice stretch up the front and the back chain of the body. Belly button firmly pulled in to center. Let's try that little flow on the other side. 
walking up towards the front of your mat, peeling up along the center line. Check that your feet are just inside of hip width distance apart. Find a nice, strong, modified mountain rooting through the feet, feeling the energy coursing up through the feet towards the crown of your head as you drop the fingertips softly down to the floor. Find your focal point, your drishti. Take a big breath in and on the exhale, float the left leg up behind you, finding your modified warrior three, pausing here for roughly five seconds, trying to find um, that tabletop line through the hips and the shoulders. Then come back into a standing position, kicking or floating the left leg up in front of you as if you were trying to kick the front wall away and floating the hands overhead. When you're ready, tuck into your eagle seat, crossing the left leg over the right, tucking behind the calf or keeping the foot softly connected to the mat and bringing the hands down softly but actively pushing into the hands and finding that strength through the arms, chest, upper back and shoulders. Kick straight back into your warrior three, loading a little bit on the balance and the coordination. And if you find that you catch a little wobble, maybe just touch the foot to the floor, Find your warrior three line again. When you're ready, kick the leg out in front, trying to keep it hovering off the floor, but floating it weightlessly up. So even though there's strength in your movement, there's no tenseness in the body at all. Then cross the left leg over the right, coming into your eagle bind and bringing the hands down softly along the center line, actively pushing into the palms and allowing the elbows to float. Then take a big step back and find your lunge line, wiggling the front foot forward if you need to, dropping down nice and low through the pelvis. Place your left palm securely underneath your left hand and take a big sweeping breath, throwing the right arm open up behind you, almost allowing the hand to softly throw back and finding as much opening through the ribs as you can. From your modified lunge line, we're going to come into a wide pyramid, Parvotanasana. You're going to step up the back leg, trying to find a nice wide pyramid, both legs long and lengthened, either dropping your hands to the mat or crossing the palms if you can, or coming up higher, maybe bracing on the shins or on the top of your thighs, or maybe just holding the hands on the hips and lengthening in a tabletop line if the floor is not your friend today. So just play and see what works for you. If you can, cross the one hand over the other, bracing opposite hand on each side of the foot. Keep the belly button firmly pulled in. And then we'll ease our way from here back into a lunge line. So uncross your hands, frame the lead leg, Soften your front knee, take a big step back, relax the back knee, relax the back foot, coming into full Anyanya Asana, crescent lunge by floating your hands overhead, finding almost a soft curve through the back, pull up strongly through the inner thighs, pull up from your pubic bone towards your breastline and soften and relax the shoulders and the collarbones as you gently arc up to look up at the ceiling. Then gently drop your fingertips to the mat. We're going to find that little vinyasa. Step back into a plank. Nice and strong, using knees or no knees to chaturanga down. Bend through the elbows, trying to hover off the floor for a second. Then relax onto the belly. Find a gentle cobra line, bottom ribs still connected, pushing the elbows, making them almost heavy and dropping the shoulders away from the ears. Then tuck the toes under, push into the toes and the palms simultaneously to come up into a strong plank, nice and strong through the shoulders and the core, and then morph into your down dog and pause here for a beat, taking a nice awesome stretch through the front and the back chain of the body. Hands more or less shoulder width apart, feet hip width distance apart, really trying to drop the heels of your feet to the floor and pike your bum up to the ceiling as you keep your belly button firmly pulled in. And from here, you're going to take a gentle walk to the front of the mat, and you may need a strap for the next series. Um, we're going to come to hand to big toe, and I'll demonstrate with the strap and without the strap. Um, let's play on the left side first, just so that you can see where you're moving to on the mat. So we're going to step our left foot into the strap. You can either just loop the strap around, or if you've got a strap that's got a nice secure D-ring, you can make a nice little 
foothold and step your foot into that loop. Place your hand on your right hip, or you can lean your fingertips into a wall or a piece of furniture if you need to. You're going to take a big breath in, keep your eye on a focal point in front of you, and you're going to bring that leg up to the A line, trying to brace in. If you're not using the strap, if you um, are able to get hold of the leg, front view, you're going to brace your hand on the hip or keep it long and lengthened um, in a T-frame or just soft at your side. You're going to think knee to nose. Take your middle index finger and thumb, make a little toe lock, and then bring the leg out into extension in front of you. Trying to keep your shoulders and your hips nice and squared to the floor. And of course, leaning into a piece of wall or furniture if you need some assistance finding that leg. Root softly through your supportive side, holding it roughly there for about 10 seconds. And then when you're ready, opening up the leg to the side of the room, dropping the shoulders away from your ears and finding as much length and strength through your supportive side as you can. Then ease your way back to your start position on the mat. Let go of the toe, find the deep position, just drawing up strength through the leg and pausing there for a second. Then thinking knee to hip, Replicating what we did earlier on to come into dancer, take the right hand, run it down the length of your leg, squeeze the two knees together softly. And on an exhale, think of hinging forward, think of that warrior three position, but kick the foot into your hand, almost away from your bottom, as you float the opposite hand overhead to come into a little dancer stretch. Looking for softness and strength simultaneously. And then gently peeling up the center line and finding a tree front view, either placing the toe on the floor for support or bringing it up a little bit higher underneath the knee or above the knee. Find the tree line that works for you and just float your hands softly into prayer and pause here for a beat, looking for length and strength. Don't tense into it. I want your muscles beautifully relaxed but strong and resilient at the same time. Then bring it down, give me a little shake up. Let's try that sequence on the other side, trying to flow through with control and allowing the foot to stay floating and only tapping out to the floor if you catch a wobble and need to find your balance again. You ready? Let's do this. All right. Standing up nice and tall, using strap or no strap, you're going to think knee to nose or knee to hip. On the right, take your middle index finger and thumb or take your strap, loop it around the foot and extend into your A-line. Left arm long and lengthened or maybe T-framed or bracing on your hip. Play with it and see what works for you. Finding that length through the body and holding for roughly 10 seconds. Then gently opening up the legs to the side of the room. Only opening up as much as you can control and try to keep that stack on your supportive side. So thinking shoulder over hip, hip over knee, knee over ankle. Then bring it back to the center line, lose the foot or the strap and try to use that draw up, that pulling up of energy on both legs to hold your line. Then bend the knee softly, run the right hand down, the entire length of your leg, reaching for the bridge of your foot. Squeeze the two knees softly together and look for length through the body. When you're ready, think warrior three, kicking up that right leg behind you and kick the foot into the hand and away from your bottom. Try to resist pulling the foot into your bum. If you pull the foot into your bum, you tend to make yourself very really torso heavy and it feels almost as if you're going to fall and hit the floor. If you kick the leg away, you're acting as a counterbalance with your back leg to that opposite arm that's traveling forward. So kick up and away from your bottom as you come into extension. Notaraya Sana Dancer. Then gently come straight into a tree, tucking into the tree position of your choice, Vrksasana on the right, and just looking for that groundedness to the mat, almost drawing energy up through your supportive foot, through the chain of the leg, all the way through the neckline towards your crown, and then softly connecting your arms, chest and upper back by pushing actively into your prayer hands and allowing the elbows to softly track out. 
Come back to a standing frame. Keep the strap at hand just in case you need it. We're going to come down onto the haunches. Maybe bringing your hands to prayer. Feet either sandwiched together or you can open them up hip with distance apart if you need to. You're going to come onto the haunches, bending the knees and trying to hold your haunch position with your heels off the floor, strongly pushing through the hands, but not tensing up the body. So even though you're actively pushing, you're mindfully softening the shoulders away from your ears. You're thinking grace and strength simultaneously, looking for length and softness through the spine as you hold your little haunch position. Then gently sitting back onto the mat, we're going to bring it down onto the back, one roll down, and you could use strap or no strap for the next little series. Just give me a soft roll down, sitting up nice and tall in staff pose, Dandasana. Looking once more for that length through the spine. Nod your chin towards your chest and roll down one vertebra at a time. Maybe gently hugging the knees into the chest as soon as your lower back hits the mat and give me a little shake out. Then coming to hand to toe position, but this time on the back, using strap or no strap, depending on how you're feeling. So if you're using the strap, maybe looping your right foot into your strap, finding a secure hold position and tugging down actively as you maybe T-shape the arms on the left and either keeping your supported leg bent if you need some support for your lower back or extending both legs and bracing into both heels. Take a big breath here. Of course, if you're not using the strap, you can just give me a nice Padangusta Sana lock, a nice toe lock using your middle index finger and thumb and grabbing a hold of that big toe on the right. Holding roughly here for maybe 10 to 15 seconds and then when you're ready, keep anchoring through the left shoulder, float your head to the left as you open up the leg to the right, opening up only as far as you can. So don't force that leg to the floor. If you find that your bum starts peeling up off the mat and you start rotating to the right, then rather keep your movement small. <clears throat> that's your body telling you that's your maximum range of motion. So just play when you're comfortable. Make sure that you keep rooting through your supportive side. Soften and relax. Don't tense into the movement. So don't bunch up and tighten up the shoulders. Soften. <clears throat> Make your shoulders soft. But at the same time, relax the weight of the shoulders into the mat. Inhale and come back towards the center line. Maybe bumping up your hips slightly and taking them off center to the right. <clears throat> Change your hands and draw the leg all the way across the midline of the body, almost tucking that left hip underneath you and rotating the right hip on top of the left as you come into a gentle, excellent twist, making the right shoulder blade nice and heavy to the mat. Holding for roughly 10 to 15 seconds. And then gently peeling out of it with control, placing both feet on the mat, come back to the center line, maybe just gently cradle rocking the lower back out before you try the sequence on the other side. Using strap or no strap, find a hold on the left foot, keeping your supportive leg bent or extending and bracing into both feet. Make the shoulders relax and check that you're not tensing and arching through the back of your neck. Nod your chin towards your chest, relax that little tension spot at the nape of the neck and look for length through the base leg and the spine. Holding for roughly 10 to 15 seconds and when you're ready, take a big breath in, make your right shoulder heavy and relaxed into the mat as you rotate the head to the right and open up the leg to the left. Opening up only as far as your body allows, not forcing the stretch, but using a nice soft, relaxing exhale to ease yourself into the post. Supta utita hasta padangusta sana B. Supine hand to big toe B. Come back towards the midline of the body, maybe bumping your hips up slightly and off center to the left. Change hands. And you're going to float your head to the left as you allow almost a beautiful rotation on the hips so that you're stacking the left hip on top of the right and drawing over that leg only as far as you're comfortable. If keeping the leg extended is too much for you, maybe try bending the knee and just placing your hand softly on the top of the knee and only drawing down 
as far as you're comfortable. Don't be afraid to experiment and find what works best for your body today. Ease your way softly back to the midline. Once you come back to the midline, maybe hugging both knees into the chest, gently cradle rocking the lower back up. We're going to play with Surya uh, Chandra Bigger for a second before we come into Shavasana. So dropping the soles of your feet to the mat as if you were setting yourself up for a bridge line. Think of the first breath exercise that we played with. Just keep your left hand relaxed, either on your belly or maybe on the mat alongside the body. Take your right hand, middle and index finger, either connected to your third eye or just softly tucked in. Close the left nostril, close the right nostril and inhale only through the left. Then close the left nostril and exhale right. Repeat the exercise. Close the right nostril, open and inhale through the left only. Close the left nostril, exhale right. Close your eyes, take your focus in and keep only inhaling through the left nostril and exhaling exclusively through the right nostril. Find a rhythm that works for you at a one to two inhalation to exhalation ratio. So if you're inhaling for three counts, you're gonna double up and exhale for six. If you're inhaling for four, you're going to exhale for four. And you can build that up, five to 10, six to 12, and we're not building in any retention of the breath today. We're just doing inhalation and exhalation, puraka and rechaka. Inhaling exclusively through the left, activating the parasympathetic nervous system, cooling and calming the body down after our practice. As you're breathing, try to notice whether you're tensing the body. If you are, try to relax, soften and release on the exhale, almost melting yourself imperceptibly into the mat with each exhale. Progressively building up that breath capacity, trying to increase your lung capacity, but at no stage should you be straining on the inhale or more importantly, on the exhale. Once you've completed your next breath pattern, just drop both arms softly at your side. You can keep the eyes closed. Allow the palms to rotate to look up to the ceiling. Lift both shoulder blades off the mat and then tuck the two shoulder blades like little wings beneath your body and relax your torso into the mat. Extend the right leg along the mat. Allow the big toes to reach and splay out to the corner of the mat and then replicate on the left so that you look like a little starfish with a comfortable neutral spine position but the belly button heavy and relaxed into the mat. Keep your eyes closed and try to visualize the scene that I'm going to set for you. I want you to imagine yourself as a lightning rod out on a rooftop in the middle of an electric storm. There's a thunderstorm. I want you to visualize that arc of lightning, lightning, of electricity, hitting your right big toe, feeding out to the other five toes, and then feel that electric current feeding up through your foot, through the ankle, along the whole chain of your leg, through the knee, the hip joint, along the right side of your body, feeding down your right arm to the very fingertips and then from your fingertips back up through the arm, feeding along your chest on the right, along the neck, through the right side of your face, arcing over the cranium, bleeding down the left side of your face to feed down along the neck, through the whole collar and arm on the left towards the fingertips through the fingertips feeding back down along the arm, along the left ribcage, through the left hip, through the left pelvis, 
down the length of your leg through the kneecap through the ankle joint to your very toes and then visualize that electricity jumping from your left toe to your right and running up along a circular pattern in a never ending daisy chain feeding through the right side arcing over to the left feeding in an almost cyclical pattern never ending beautiful daisy chain of energy constantly feeding you and giving you life through that strong electric current. Feel your body almost buzzing and humming with energy. Keep that visual frame within your mind's eye and then keeping your eyes closed. Gently bend the knees and connect the soles of your feet as if you were setting up a bridge line. We're going to end off with Anulum Vilum, alternate nostril breathing. So combining your two breath exercises together, take your middle finger and index finger, either placing them on the third eye or tucking them in. Close your right nostril with your thumb, inhale through the left, then close the left nostril and exhale through the right. Inhale through the right, close it, open and exhale left. Inhale left, close the left, open and exhale right. Inhale right, close it, open and exhale left. Rinse and repeat, finding a steady rhythm of your own. Inhaling through one nostril, then closing it, and exhaling through the opposite nostril, then inhaling through the opposite nostril before you close it, and exhale through the other. Your breath ratio at a one to two, so the exhalation double the amount of the inhalation. Start bringing some visualization into your exercise. Every time you inhale through the right nostril, think of connecting to your pingala, your sun breath. This aligns with your sympathetic nervous system and it builds up heat energy in the body. Every time you inhale left, think of connecting to your pingala or moon breath. This aligns to your parasympathetic nervous system. It's cooling, calming, and restorative in nature. In its most simplistic terms, with this exercise, you're looking at trying to balance out the yin and the yang, the male and the female energy systems in your body, coming to perfect harmony. As you play with that breath exercise, think of that undercurrent of energy flowing through your body in a cyclical pattern, a never-ending daisy chain of energy flowing through your beautiful open energy meridians. Make this your last breath cycle. And when you've completed your last breath cycle, just float both hands gently down to the mats and take a couple of recovery breaths, keeping the eyes closed and inhaling and exhaling through both nostrils simultaneously while trying to relax and soften into the mat. Then keeping your eyes closed, gently bring your hands to a soft prayer in front of your heart and end off your practice by tapping your index fingers to your third eye and whispering the words, Namaste. Stay on your back for as long as you need to. And when you're ready, roll over onto your side, preferably onto your right side, unless you're pregnant. Just stay here in a soft fetal position for a couple of breaths. And then when you're ready, gently push up, bringing your head up last, giving your blood pressure a chance to stabilize and come to a seated frame before you come to standing. Thank you so much for coming and playing with me today. I really hope that you enjoyed today's class. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please remember to shoot me your feedback and your comments in the comment section just below your YouTube um, video display window. And remember to subscribe with your notification bell on. I shall see you all for Pilates conditioning on the mat tomorrow. Till then, keep it light.